Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house. In this video, I'm back in Hardware Asset Workspace and want to show you a new feature that came with Utah to this workspace, kind of rounding out the entire experience for hardware asset management. Now, this is going to require hardware asset management professional. It's not the IT asset management that you may be familiar with, but let me call your attention to what's new in the Utah release for the hardware asset workspace, and that is this little square with a dollar sign. I'll go ahead and hover over it so you can see what I'm clicking on, and that is a procurement tab. So now, in addition to having an inventory tab where you're managing your stock rooms, having an asset estate where you're managing where everything is, um, and whether it's expiring or not expiring in the place, stuff like that, model management, looking up your content models and seeing uh, uh, life cycle dates, uh, there's procurement, contract management, and just basic all asset operations. In addition to this homepage, um, now we have the procurement piece. So it's kind of like the last piece of, hey, someone wants to purchase an asset. What do we need to do as far as procurement in order to procure that asset? So it's going to land on this overview page. It's going to pull up here in a second. And we're going to see a similar model in hardware asset workspace that you've seen with the other workspaces or the other tabs in the workspace. And that's starting off with important actions to call to the procurement manager or the procurement specialist's attention. So you see here we've got POs in draft for more than 30 days, basically making sure that we're keeping things up to date, purging things that don't need to be there anywhere. POs on order for more than 30 days. Okay, so something's been ordered, but we haven't received it. Um, and then escalated requests. They have seven requests waiting for a manager. Approval to be sourced. So again, bringing important things, important actions to the attention of those who need to complete those actions. Let's take a look at the actual overview dashboard here. Purchase orders pending delivery. So what's coming in? Requests pending approval. So who we're waiting on to approve things? What orders are out there by vendor? What requests are out there by state for the last 30 days? Just above my head, you can see the total expenditure by vendor. So Logitech, oh my goodness, <laughs> they're most of the spend here for this demo organization that you see here. Uh, requests that require sourcing. So that would be, it needs to be fulfilled. I got one here myself that hopefully um, I'm able to show you what it's like to source. And then open purchase orders is the last one here, um, just above my head, uh, what purchase orders are open and need to be addressed. Now, if I was to click on the location and say, hey, I just want to see this for a particular location um, and apply that, it's going to filter all these graphs and everything by that location. So I don't often show that much when I'm showing these overview, um, but that's really important for you to see that, hey, let's look at the Palo Alto warehouse here. And now we see, okay, we have seven requests pending. Um, that might be related to that stock room. It's kind of a weird association, but anyways. So there's procurement overview dashboard. Now I can hop in to these predefined tabs, look at any open requests, any open requested items or items you might call them, any tasks related. So remember we have catalog tasks on requested items where people need to do things. In this case, it's procurement actually sourcing things. Um, any purchase orders that are open, I can click on here and open an existing purchase order and take a look at that right within the workspace. So I've got all the information on the purchase order, all the different purchase order line items, receiving slips uh, since this has been received on April or March 24th, 2023. And let's hop back out of there and let's get the last one, receiving slips. So I've got all my receiving slips. I haven't opened one of these before. So here's what a receiving slip looks like and all the lines on the receiving slip of receiving looks like... Uh, Carmel Overfelt? No, that's a person's name. It doesn't actually say, um, in this case, what they're actually receiving, but not important. The point is you can get to all these details and all this important information from this screen. So what I wanted to show you too is actual sourcing. So that's something procurement does, and now they can do it from within the workspace. So we're gonna open my request here. I had put this in, I think a couple of days ago and approved it. I was getting ready for a demo. And you can see that they've requested here an Adobe Acrobat Pro license and an Apple MacBook Pro 15 inches. And what that does is it creates catalog task once it's approved. I went ahead and went and approved it. But in this case, I've got a catalog task assigned to procurement procurement that they need to come in and source that item. So I want to show you what that experience looks like. There's a catalog task, no big reveal there. What is 
different is this source request button up here in the upper right. We can use that source request button to move into the sourcing task. And here you see what sourcing a request in procurement actually looks like for the procurement person. So Adobe Acrobat Pro, you need one, but it's not, we don't have any available and there's nothing to purchase. I can't do anything, take any action. That could be a permissions thing for me. Not important, I wanna show you this on the Apple MacBook Pro. We have one to be sourced and I can pull one from transferable stock. So if I was to click here on transfer, you can see that it'll open up a line behind me. And of course my head's in the way. And I can say, here, we're gonna grab it from this stock room. If I click in there, I can go, oh, I've got this 23 in the Southern California warehouse. I got five in San Diego. Let's pull that one. And I wanna transfer one and we're gonna put it in the destination stock room. And I'm just gonna pick my uh, Truman Williams personal stock room. Yeah, sounds good. Anyways, that's what a procurement person would be doing. So let me go ahead and cancel that line and hit the other button here just above my head there purchase if i wanted to do that i could select the vendor apple and how much it is get one and then set the destination stock room and move on with the purchase and requisition process after i hit submit so that's what a sourcing task actually looks like in this new procurement workspace um, not workspace sorry this new procurement tab within the hardware asset workspace and uh, it's new to utah so i wanted to make sure you saw it how it works and how you might benefit from it especially if you're using hardware asset management professional from ServiceNow. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it to somebody who you think might be interested in doing their procurement task and a new experience in ServiceNow. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.